What's up, YouTube Revolution? Zomfected Gaming 349 at your fingertips. It's that time of week now to do my episode 3 review called Long Long Time. This episode opens up with Joel washing his hands in a stream cleaning his hurt hand from a couple episodes ago when he beat up the Fedra soldier. Joel also builds this rock pile for a memorial of Tess since she sacrificed herself at the end of episode 2. We get to see Joel and Ellie in the woods and Ellie says she'd never been in the woods. After Joel and Ellie go to this place and Ellie notices this Mortal Kombat arcade machine and it's awesome. She mentions how her friend showed her one of these machines which was, of course, Riley in the Left Behind DLC. The way Ellie also expresses her hype over the arcade machine was awesome because it's 100% in Ellie's personality. Ellie goes to the basement of this place and starts looking around and she notices a clicker sound, but when she looks over it's just a stalker trapped under the collapsed ceiling. Ellie takes out her knife and starts moving it around, and the way the stalker turns its eye looking at the knife is really cool. Ellie also cuts its head open and you can notice fungus and blood coming out, and then stabs it in the head. We also see Joel leave his assault rifle behind sadly because that assault rifle was awesome, but he said there's not enough ammo out there for it. Ellie then says she wants the assault rifle, but of course Joel says no. Joel and Ellie head out on their hike again and they notice a crash plane. Ellie asks Joel has he flew in one of them before and he says a few times. Ellie tells Joel that he was lucky to go on a plane and be in the sky and Joel said so did the dead people in the wreckage as well. Ellie also asks did planes fall out of the sky on outbreak day and Joel says most of them and the reason for that was people getting infected on board. Ellie asks Joel was the first infected from a monkey and Joel says no I thought you went to school. So then Joel gives Ellie this history lesson about Outbreak Day on how most of the people got infected. He tells her about how the food supply like bread and pancakes, anything flour based was infected with the cordyceps and got people sicker. Eventually the people would succumb to the fungus so they would start biting people. After, Joel and Ellie find this area full of dead bodies which are all skull and bones by now and Joel also gives her a history lesson about this too. Joel tells Ellie that these people weren't infected and Fedra killed them which is kinda a callback to Joel and Sarah getting shot at on outbreak day by a Fedra soldier. These non-infected people were told that they were gonna be brought to a quarantine zone by Fedra, but if there wasn't enough room, Fedra would just execute them all and which that is very very cold. But to the reason why the Fedra soldiers did this was because dead people can't be infected which lowers the population of possible hosts being taken over by the cordyceps fungus. The camera zooms up on the dead skeleton bodies and we can see there's a baby skeleton. And then boom flashback to 2003. It shows the mom and her baby and tons of people being escorted onto the Fedra trucks and these are all the exact same people who were all dead in the field 20 years later. In this moment we are introduced to Bill, a doomsday prepper survivalist who is hiding in the exact town where all these poor citizens are being escorted out of the town but Bill being prepared enough, he was able to avoid being taken away by Fedra. Bill has all these cameras all over town so he knows when Fedra is fully gone. Eventually Bill goes outside and he's like, yeah this is my town now. Bill then makes his way to the Home Depot to go post-apocalyptic shopping. He then goes back to his town to set up all the traps so nobody can get into his town. He also sets up this nice farm so he can make some delicious gourmet meals. Bill turns on the TV to see the cameras and an infected steps into one of the traps. And boom the trap hits his head and the infected dies. We then jump 4 years later from 2003 to 2007, a man named Frank falls into one of Bill's traps, but into a hole and survives. Bill goes over to check up on him to see if he's infected. Bill actually has one of those testers that Fedra has and checks Frank and he is green, no infection. Frank was originally from the Baltimore QZ and he was actually on his way to Boston QZ but ended up in Bill's town instead. Frank tells Bill he is really hungry and hasn't eaten in two days. Bill tells Frank no because if Frank leaves and tells people where he ate, then bums may show up to Bill's town looking for free lunch. He also says, this is not an Arby's, and Frank says Arby's doesn't have free lunch, it's a restaurant. 
Now, I gotta say, this was actually pretty funny, the whole Arby's thing. It actually kind of makes me want Arby's because I haven't eaten Arby's in a long time. But eventually, Frank is invited to get cleaned up and then eat dinner. And then Frank loves that meal so much that he hasn't had a meal like that in years. Frank, after, goes to a piano and tries to play this song, but isn't the best singer and piano player. And Bill says, no, stop. Bill takes over and plays Linda Ronstadt long, long time, which is where the episode gets its name. Since the song says, gonna love you for a long, long time, Frank asks, who's the girl? Bill says, there's no girl, and Frank says, I know, and Frank kisses Bill, and this kicks off their relationship. After, Bill goes and takes a shower, and Frank is in bed waiting for Bill to be finished, and Bill goes into bed with Frank, and eventually we cut three years later. The year is 2010, and it seems like it's one of those days where Bill and Frank are having one of their bad days together with an argument. The argument is about how Frank wants the town to be well maintained and they are gonna have to make some friends in order to make sure the place can be still standing for the rest of their life. Bill says no, we won't make friends or meet anybody because Bill is a paranoid guy who doesn't want to come into contact with the government which is Fedra and he says they are exactly like the Nazis. After Frank says, I actually been talking to a nice woman on the radio and Bill's like, what? Bill is obviously afraid that Frank is either gonna turn straight or be bisexual, but it's actually not the case. He is safely gonna stay gay with Bill. It's actually just Frank contacting Tess since she is a smuggler with Joel and they know how to get their hands on great stuff in the apocalypse. It seems that Frank and Tess are really good friends so Bill shouldn't have to worry. They are just in the friend zone. Frank actually invites Joel and Tess over for a really nice dinner and Joel talks about how the fence has only a year at most and Joel knows the exact material for the fence to stay standing for the rest of their lives. Also, it's confirmed that how they all communicate with each other is with 60s, 70s, and 80s music since Frank and Tess talked about this. 80s means trouble. After we jump three years later into the year 2013 and Frank is jogging and makes Bill go for a jog but Bill is running out of energy but of course Bill needs the exercise. Frank then shows Bill a surprise with a strawberry garden and says he traded a little gun to Joel and Tess for some seeds to grow these strawberries. We after cut to a dark stormy night and a bunch of bandits try to make their way into Bill's town and they start getting killed by the traps and wakes up Frank. Bill is outside trying to fight the bandits but one stupid thing Bill is doing is standing in the middle of the street with no cover. Bill then gets shot in the stomach and Frank has to escort Bill inside to treat his wound. The action of this scene was pretty awesome but too short lived, Bill says the traps will take care of the rest of them. I have one little nitpick that I have with this episode, is that there is a lack of infected in this episode. But after, we jump to 10 years later in 2023, and Frank is in a wheelchair and has a terminal condition, I think it's cancer, he has. Sadly, eventually, Frank says it's his last day of living since there was no cure even before the world fell, and obviously now it's worse in this type of world. So Frank wants to die by drinking wine while it's spiked and Bill says he wants to opt out with him since he has nothing else left to do without him. Bill has fulfilled his life with Frank and this scene was just so emotionally punching in the gut. So they end up drinking and that's the end of Bill and Frank. Plus, this was a major deviation away from the game since we never got to see Bill be a grumpy man and get pissed off at Ellie like in the game. That's my takeaway with this episode, since I wish we got to see that moment, but at least the story with Bill and Frank was fleshed out so much better in the show, and Frank's death was way, way, way more better in the show and much more peaceful. Plus, in the game, it seemed like Bill and Frank's relationship wasn't as good as it was in the show, since Frank wanted to leave Bill and Frank was bitten and hung himself. But I guess it's better off that Bill in the show dies with Frank because I don't think he needs the stress of Ellie pissing him off. Seeing Bill and Frank's story makes us sympathize way more with Bill and he deserves to rest in peace. Eventually when Joel and Ellie make it to Bill's town, Joel notices a note that they left saying that Bill and Frank decided to rest in peace. 
Joel tells Ellie to read the note, and there's a part where it says, keep Tess safe, but obviously, that's not the case anymore, and this made Joel feel really emotional. Joel feels like he failed Tess, just like how he failed his daughter, Sarah. Also, since that bill had hot water, both Joel and Ellie decided to get cleaned up before heading out. Awesome part is, both Joel and Ellie get their signature video game clothing. Joel wears the green plaid shirt and Ellie has the signature red shirt like in the game. Also, Ellie finds Bill's gun and puts it in her backpack. And then Joel finds a truck and Ellie has never been in a vehicle before and she says, wow, it's like a spaceship. Joel says, no, it's like a piece of crap Chevy, I think it was. Joel also tells Ellie to put on her seatbelt, but she doesn't know what that is, so Joel has to show her. Now you can definitely tell the fatherly-daughterly bond is growing between them. And also funny part is, Curious Ellie is touching everything in the truck and opens up the glove box and finds a tape and Joel is like, no put it back, but Ellie puts it in and Joel is like, wait this is awesome. Joel is like, this is Linda Rodstadt, you know who she is and Ellie's like, no I don't know who she is because she obviously was born into the apocalyptic world. The Linda Ronstadt song is the one Bill was playing and singing on the piano long long time and the camera pans away as Joel and Ellie leave Bill's town and ends at Bill's window open. Bill left the window open so the room doesn't stink up from his decomposing corpse. But yeah, this episode was actually pretty good. I would say I liked episode 1 and 2 more but still episode 3 I really enjoyed. I just wish there was more of Joel and Ellie in this episode, but at least we got Joel and Ellie at the beginning and the ending. But this is understandable to why it was a mostly Bill and Frank centric episode because the episode is called Long Long Time which meant they spent their love life together for a very long time. This episode has amazing acting from both Frank and Bill and was more of a peaceful filler type episode but still really good because I don't want you all to get me wrong and think I hate the episode because the story in this was just actually really really tear jerking and really well done. But my only nitpick with this episode are just the lack of infected in this episode and the lack of bandits attacking because let's be honest, they had it a little too easy in that town for all the years that they lived there. In reality, there would be so much more attacks than what was depicted in the episode. But it's all good, still a great episode. The downtime with less action was alright because episode 4 looks really action packed. We are gonna see Joel and Ellie encounter the Hunters in episode 4 so that should be pretty fun. But anyways, my final verdict score for episode 3 Long Long Time is a solid 8.8 .8 out of 10. But that's all for this HBO's The Last of Us review. If you're a Last of Us fan, consider subscribing to the channel and ding that bell icon really hard so I can always stay within fast reach of your fingertips when new uploads arrive. Zomfected Gaming 349 over and out. <laughs> Uh, 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 uh,